Okay, let me go to the homework. Yeah. I'm doing all my problems, assignments. What is that? Was that five point? Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. I think it is. All right, so this one is the one I, I went over two of these the other day, and she thought she said it wasn't getting the forward on the line. I hope it's forward this time. Yeah, I think I forgot to hit desktop. There's two or three steps. Step one, go away. Step one is multiply by 10 or 100 based on decimal place. So what this problem starts off in the what position? 10. So you multiply by 10. So that would give us n is equal to 0.2 repeating. So I'm going to multiply by 10. And that will give me 10 in is equal to point or 2.2 .2 repeating. Now the second thing you're going to do, subtract the smaller equation from the larger. Now, a lot of people will say, well, what equation is which? Well, you only got two equations. n is equal to 0.2, and 10n is equal to, so which one's bigger? 10n. So you go over here, 3, <coughs> and you take 10n equals 2.2 repeating, and you subtract n, which is a 1 right there, equals 0.2. <laughs> now the whole purpose for this is to get rid of the what? That's what you're trying to get rid of. And that's why you have to subtract it. And when you do that, you get 9n is equal to what? You divide by 9. Now take your handy dandy calculators out. Then divide 2 by 9 and see what you get. I'm sorry, what? I subtracted the smaller equation from the bigger equation. Here's the smaller equation. This is the beginning equation. Here's the larger equation. You subtract them. That's the way you do every single one of them. So now you type in 2 over 9, and you should feel good about yourself. Not have to put on too much makeup and look like an Oompa Loompa. 
calculator. I got an excellent. All right, let's try another. Let's try one in the homework that's since that since that one got messed up. Let's do another one, which is a, a one with a if I could talk hundreds. Because the other day I did I did a tenth and I did a hundredth, but the so they didn't record, so we'll do a hundredth just to make sure everybody knows what's going on. There's one. All right, try that one. And if you could do these two, you can pretty much handle anything on the on the uh, test or homework. Let's see. If you scoot back a little bit farther. Let's say get on the wall back there, then you might not be able to see a dang thing. 2.36, and the 0.36 is repeated. Yeah, next time sit in the back corner back there. Go back a few more feet. Them damn Russians. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So N, and you can do it this way. N is equal to 2.36, repeating, and then multiply by 100. Why did I multiply by 100? And what happens to the three sixes, the repeating three sixes? They cancel out, yes. And that leaves you with 99 in is equal to 234. And then divide by 99. And besides reducing, take your calculator and divide 234 by 99. And you should come up with the repeating decimal. So you type that in so you can feel good about yourself. And another reason I asked that is because I brought it up to the people that I went there with, mm -hmm. and they thought that I was the craziest person on earth. Yeah, and I've been going to church longer than they have. Should be three six three six three six. Now your calculator may round the last digit, which rounds a couple of more digits, but it's supposed to be repeating. 234 divided by 99. Yeah, they looked at me like I was crazy. It's probably, what? You got to say Okay, so what is it? Uh, 3, 9, or 11. What? All right, say it one more time. 78. Okay, so three goes into it. I'm just going to type it in again and get the answer. There it is, 26 over 11. I think that's what you said. There it is. So nine goes into both of them. Yeah, nine times six is 54. So yes, nine will go into both of them. Okay, but the process, that's how you do the process. One, you write n is equal to whatever number. Two, you multiply that equation by whatever decimal place is taken. This one's a hundredth place, so you multiply by a hundred. Then you subtract the smaller from the largest, and you get this, and then you simplify. All right, that takes care of those two problems. Did anybody else send? I thought I saw another one. Okay, let me get that one. Yeah. I'll look at that because I have no idea what this one. On vacation, Janet traveled full length there, stuff, blah, blah, blah. She reported a couple of travel times between cities, blah, blah, blah. 
Yeah, that was aggravated me too. Right, each of the okay, each of the travel ties mixed number represent the denominator of sixty. Okay, it says that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me just read it. Blaine, what? Blaine, Washington to Seattle. Blaine, Washington. To Seattle is one hour and 43 minutes. So that'd be one over 43 over 60. Is that all you're supposed to do? Yeah, I was thinking after that question, he's asking you to. Okay. What's Janet's total driving time from Blaine, Washington to San Cedro, California? So Blaine, Washington to San Cedro. So you have to add these two. And that would be 1 and 68 over 60, which would be 2, 8 over 60, which would be 2 and 4 over 30. Is that right? Should be 2 and 4 over 30. Something like, well, 2, 15. Two, I'm, I'm doing it in my head, so you're just going to have to help me. Oh, let's just do it by hand. Let me just do it by two. So one in forty three sixties plus twenty five over sixty is equal to one and sixty eight over sixty, which is equal to two and eight over sixty, which is equal to two and four over thirty, which is equal to two and 2 over 15. Well, 2 over 15, you do that in a calculator, but that should be your answer. Let's see what they say. Two and two fifteenths. Oh, of course, Pokey. Hold on a minute. Two and two fifteenths. What are all the fractions? God, you gotta add all those? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you have to add, since this one is San Trejo, you can't just do, you gotta add every single one of them. And here's the problem. Yeah. It's telling you to use the answers from part A to write an expression that would help it find it. Hold on, let me look at it. It's, it says, what is Janet's total driving time for Blaine Watch? Give your answer as a mixed number and in terms of hours and minutes using the answers from part A. Write the expression or find driving time. Okay, you got to add every single one of them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. It has, it has 18 points. Let's say let's let's do that then. Let's do what you did. I I read it totally different. I thought it was I didn't think you were gonna have to add every single one of them. So that's one forty three over sixty plus two thirty six over sixty plus eight six over sixty plus five five over sixty. This is so stupid. Plus two eighteen over sixty plus twenty-five over sixty. Alright, so two plus five is seven plus two three is ten is eighteen hours. Eighteen hours, and then sixty will be right here. And then we're gonna add all these up. Forty-three and thirty-six will be what? Seventy-nine, seventy-nine will be eighty-four. 84 and 5 be 89. 89 and 20 be 209, right? 
209 plus 5 be 214. 214 plus 18 will be 232. What y'all get? 237. Y'all help me out. Add them up. 232. Okay, I'll do it again. 43, 36, 6, 5, 18, and 25. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 plus 6 is 16. 22. Uh, 22 plus 8 is 30. 33. Yep. Bring 3. And then 4 and 3 is 7. 10. 13. 133. Is that what y'all got? That's right. 18 and 133 over 60. Well, 60 will go into 133 twice. And that will leave 20. The 2 will go over to 18. 13 over 60. And 13 is prime, so that's it. This is not a test question. This is a stupid question. Okay? It's, it's a drill to see if you can add. It's, it's just a drill, but I would not ask that on the test. I would ask you to add two fractions, but not six. Two or three is about as far as I would go. Okay? So if you got 20 and 13 over 60, good for you. Make 100 on your homework, but you're not going to see this on the test. If you do, you'll only see one, and that's it. But to me, that's a lot of extra, that's busy work. Did you get, did everybody get 16? 13 over 60? Oh, hold on. 20, and so we can be proud of ourselves, is that what you said? 13 over 60. If you get it wrong, that means you're a what? Failure. Oh, God, I'm a failure. They don't want you to add it up. Like I said, it's a stupid question. They want you to just write everything down. There. Don't worry about it. Just just write all that down. Yeah. Mr. Stalin found a stupid question. He found another one. So that is a stupid question. Not that you ask it. That's a stupid question for me to put on the test. I'm not going to put that on the test. All right, now I need to go over what I really wanted to go over today, and that's fractions and scientific notation. So let me go over that. Now, the fractional laws, I'm going to put both of them up here. Well, I'm going to call them up. Go to my handy-dandy Google sheet. And I'm going to put exponential laws. And I'm going to take my images, and I'm going to do my snip. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. New. And I'm just going to pick one. Let's do with this. Go to my handy dandy whiteboard. I've I've been through training. Hubie's training. I had to do all this myself. A little blurry, but all right, write those down. Those are your exponential rules. While you're writing those down, let's we'll see if I can get a better 
write those down. I'm going to get a better copy of it. Maybe if I can blow it up a little bit. Okay. Maybe I can just use this. Blow it up. Zoom. 150%. There we go. And I'll snip that out. I'm talking to myself, people. Yep. Try and find a good one where you can actually see the name. There we go. There's a good one. image. Snip. Pick that word. Moist. Say. There. I'm going to pull it up. Here's a better one. That one's better. Product, quotient, power, inverse, and zero power. That's the laws of exponents. We'll give you an example of each one as soon as you get through copying the down. Now, we're going to go to the scientific notation section after this and these two are used in scientific notation. So you need to really pay attention when I go over product and push it through. Oh, wait, so. Yeah, those first two. Sci uh, product and push it. And as soon as she gets back from the phone call, we'll start. I don't want to take off until she gets back. Huh? You can write these down. I'm going to give you some more out here. I'm going to give you some. I mean, you can write those down if you want to. That's up to you. Oops. She's not having one of those conversations. I walked in my home. I was at the Pendleton campus and I coming up the stairs and there was a girl in the stairwell. Whew. She was giving her boyfriend or husband what for, let me tell you. Yeah, she was telling him to take his stuff and, and get a moving van and get his stuff out of her apartment and da 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 da. The only thing that could make, there's only one thing that could make a woman that mad. No. She caught him cheating. That's worse than cheating. That woman was mad, and there was only one thing that could cause her to get that mad, and that was she must have walked in. Well, she probably would have because she was, she was mad. And I don't think it was because of the dog fur that his dog left on the sofa.
We're talking about you. Oh, you got a mother? No, I'm just kidding. I just forgot to tell you, I got run over by a pig yesterday. Yeah, I was letting you catch it. No, this one was about 400 pounds. And the funny part was, my mama, she's 78 years old, and she's about that tall. She was out there, we were trying to get one of the sows into the middle of the barn where they have their pigs, and she's the next one that's going to have piglets. So we were trying to get her in, and she's usually pretty tame. Well, she didn't want to go in there. So my mother said, well, you stand over here, and I stood over here, and <clears throat> the reason I let my mama work with them is she's, she's better with animals than I am. Um, once they don't go in the first couple of times, I start getting irritated. She don't. Well, anyway, her name, the, the sow, the mother, the sow's name is Boots because she has white feet. She's black with white feet, so we call her Boots. Well, she proceeded to come toward my direction, and I thought she would stop, and she didn't. The funny thing was that I rode her for about 15 feet because she went between my legs, and she's a big hog, so she just carried me on her back. Bad thing was when I landed, I landed up against a T post, and that T post scraped the whole back of my back. So if I'm moving kind of strange today, I feel like I've got third degree burns on my back because it's a scrape from the top of my neck, from the bottom of my neck all the way down to the bottom of my back. So she didn't mean to do it. We got her in there though. She finally got in there. All right. So if I give you 10 to the 4 times 10 to the 6th, the main thing that you need to remember is that these two bases are what? They're the same. And if they're the same, you can do what with the exponents? Okay, you need to remember that. Ten to the eighth over ten to the second. Well, the bases are the same. So with dividing, you can do what with that sign? Good. Now you're going to see a lot of this in scientific notations. So you need to remember that. The power rule, basically these are rules that you use for other math, but not really. You use them sometimes in scientific notation. But the power rule says that if I have x to the fifth power raised to the second power, then to make things a whole lot less complicated, what can I do with 2 and 5? Multiply them and you get x to the 1. These two are mainly for simplification. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of confused on the second. This one? Yeah, would that be 1? You're talking about 8 minus 2? No, 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 no. You thinking, you're thinking about the, the exponents are the same. X to the fourth over X to the fourth, which is equal to X to the four minus four, which is equal to X to the zero, which is equal to what? One. The top and the bottom has to be exactly the same. I'm just I'm telling you why you're getting one. 10 over 10. Well, what is 10? Any number is raised to the what? The first power. All right, do your 10 to the 1 minus 1, which is equal to 10 to what? 0, which is equal to 1. So that's why, since these are the same, that's why you can't them out and say 1. But if they're not the same, you can't do that. And these aren't the same. Yes. That's why you can cancel because they're the same. If I give you 
x to the fourth over x to the fourth, cancel. They have to be the same. And you're forgetting. You're, 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 you're forgetting it, but you're not forgetting. Does that make sense? You're because you see the 10 over 10 there, but you're thinking that cancels out. But what you're forgetting is that the exponents are different. See? I got you. So right here. I got you. Say again. I got you. Say again. Yes. Now, you need to know what the definition of scientific notation is. And if I asked you, most of you couldn't tell me because you've been told so many different rules that you need something to kind of help you out. You need a Hubertism. So I'm going to give you a Hubertism. What is scientific notation? I learned this in training. Scientific notation. Placing the decimal to the right of the first number greater than Now, you need to memorize that definition because when you're told to change a number in the scientific notation, if you don't know that definition, then you're going to get the problem wrong. Okay? So write that down. What? We're on whatever chapter point six. <clears throat> that means you're probably looking at a test maybe Wednesday. I mean, what's the Thursday? Wednesday. Next Wednesday or next or the next uh, Monday, something like that. But. I will post the test in class and I will go over it in class so there will be nobody that says, oh, I didn't know we had a test. And you don't have to worry about aggravating me about when the test is because I usually go over it in class and post it in class. All right. So 99% of the time, if I tell students to make a, make a number into scientific notation or to make a scientific notation into a number, most of the time y'all get that right. That's not the problem we have. Okay? The problem we have is when you're given an answer and you're told to give it, put it in scientific notation and you think it's already in scientific notation. That's the problem. And that's where people miss chemistry problems, miss biology problems, miss math problems because they don't remember the simple definition. So I'm going to give you an example of what people do remember. Point zero 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 three one six. Okay? Students go, okay, I can check that in the scientific notation. One, two, three, four. And that'd be three point one six times ten to the negative four. And they get it right because they know how to do it. And then they go, okay, I'm going to change 432,000 into scientific notation. And they get decimals right here, and they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And they go over here, and they say 4.32 times 10 to the fifth power. And they get a check, and everything's fine. And then they get something like this on the test. 5.16 times 10 to the second. Then they go over here and they go, okay, that'd be 5.16 and then move two places, one, two, which is equal to 516. And then, huh? and then they should say uh, point, uh, 3.14 times 10 to the negative two 
and then they go, okay, that'd be three point one four, and then two places to the left, one, two, zero, that'd be point zero three four. All right, now these are the ones that people understand how to do. And if you don't, I'll go over them. I have a different way of showing you how to do it, and that's why I go over scientific notation. And then I show you where 90% of you get the problems wrong. It's not these. It's the problems that I'm going to show you after we go over this. Because there's some people that don't understand how to get this. Okay? So that's what we're going to go over now. So I'm going to take my handy dandy. But the reason I throw that out there and say 90% of you probably know how to do this, and that's usually true. When you graduate high school, you should be able to know the general definition of a scientific notation, unless you've been out of high school 150 to 200 years, right? Yes. Okay? So that's what y'all say. I won't say that. Y'all say it's been 100 years since I've had this. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you need to be able to do is know where the, know where the decimal is on any number. It's point zero zero three four. You know where that decimal is. It's 514,000. The decimal on both of these numbers is at the same place every single time. On a decimal, it's there where it's shown. On a whole number, it's where? Right there. Now, read the definition. Placing the decimal to the right of the first number greater than zero. And I always have this question. Always there's some student out there. Well, how do we know which direction you go from? Which way do you read? Which way have you been reading for the last 150 years? Left to right. Left to right. Unless you're from the Middle East. My salama. So I want you to go left to right. I want you to find the first number greater than zero. And right here, I want you to go from left to right. And I want you to find the biggest number greater than that. The first number greater than zero. So let's go with this one. Where is the first number greater than zero? The three. The three. So you go and you take the blue and you put an arrow right there because that is where the decimal needs to what? Needs to be. Okay? Which, which, what number is greater than zero here? What number, the first number greater than zero? The five. You read from left to right. That's why you got to know this, this definition. If you don't memorize this definition, you might as well just not deal with this problem. So, this is a Hubertism, so you're not going to see this in any book. So now I'm going to rewrite this problem, and I'm going to count my decimal places. Now, what happens is you always get a student, oh, I know how to do it. Okay, I'm not teaching you because you already know how to do everything. I'm teaching the students that don't know. So for the students that do know, just keep your mouth shut. For those that don't know, ask questions. Because when we get to those problems, 90% of students miss, the ones that listen to me are the ones that don't know how to do it. Okay? And I say that to every single Math 155 class, because when I go through this, I always have a student that says, I know how to do it, I know how to do it, I know how to do it. But when they get to the 90% problems that we haven't even seen yet, they're the first ones that go, how'd you get that? All right? So follow what I'm saying, keep an open mind, and hopefully you'll be all right. So, I'm going to put that decimal. I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to change it to magenta. I'm going to put that decimal down here. But I have to move it. Now, I ain't said anything about no direction because that's the first thing the student thinks they know the thing. First thing they're going to say. I haven't mean, said anything about that. One, two, three. So, I'll rewrite it. Three. 0.4 times 10 to the blank 3. Now, why do you do that, Hubert? Because 99% of you are going to get the 3 right. What are you going to get wrong? You're going to get the sign wrong. 
That's why I tell students to wait till the very end to do the sign. And this one, I'm going to put the decimal where? Right here. So that's one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to rewrite five point one four times ten to the point five. Okay, now the reason I haven't done a sign yet is because I wait to do the sign last. Now, here is the Hebrewism that some of you probably have never seen before unless you've had my class. I'm going to highlight this blank right here. Now, you're not going to see this pay off until I show you the problems in the next unless in the next portion. You're going to see where this is going to pay off. So, we'll take my highlighter and I'm going to highlight this thing right here where that blank is. Where that blank is. And I'm going to put a highlight right here. And I'm going to ask the question mentally. Mentally ask yourself. Now let's go over mentally ask yourself because some people have a problem with this. I say mentally ask yourself, and they start moving the decimal again. I didn't say anything about moving the decimal again. I said mentally ask yourself which way do I move the decimal? to get original form. Okay, what is the original form? The original form is what we started with. Okay. So I want you to, and I'm going to put a little arrow here. Put a little arrow right here. Now, ask yourself mentally, which way do I move this decimal to get back the way it was? To the left or to the right? To the left, so it gets a negative. Which way do I move this decimal in my head to get back the way it was? To the right. And that's how you do scientific notation. Now, where this little sentence pays off is in the next set of problems that I'm going to give you. Was always got one says, well, I don't have to do it, I don't want to do it. Okay. All right, don't be mad when you're going on. That's how you do scientific notation. All right, let's do two more. I'm going to erase these. Numbers. Put two more up here and let y'all do them. Seven hundred and seventy six million. Point zero 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 seven three five. I do this too. First of all, where are the decimals? Second of all, where do you want the decimals?
So the decimal is right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Now, ask yourself mentally, which way do I move this decimal to get it back the way it was? Which way do I move this decimal in my head to get it back the way it was? Now, the first thing I get is, well, Hubert, I didn't learn it that way. I learned it that if it was a small number, you move it to the left. And if it's a large number, you move it to the right. Okay. And when I do these next few problems, if you get it right, then you don't have to worry about it. If you get it wrong, then I'm right, and you are wrong. Deal? Okay. Let's go with 45 times 10 to the 5th multiplied by, now let's make it 15, 15 times 10 to the 5th multiplied by 3 times 10 to the 8th. That is the multiplication with scientific notation. Now all of us can multiply 3 times 15. We don't need to calculate it for that. <clears throat> what is 3 times 15? Good job. So 45 times 10 to the 5th times 10 to the 8th. Now what do we do with these two guys? They have the exponents. Good. 5 plus 8 13. Are we finished? No. Why? You have to put it in scientific notation because right now it's not in scientific notation. So you can go back to the definition. Where is the decimal on 45? Then you move it right here. Now this is where students get wrong. They don't get wrong with 4.5. They get that right. 4.5 times 10 to the 13 blank 1. It's that sign right there is where they get wrong. Now ask yourself this question. Which way do I move this decimal in my head to get back the way it was? So it's 4.5 times 10 to the 4.5. And usually when I have a class of like 25 or 30, there'll be five people. As soon as I write, uh oh! -uh! supposed to be 4.5 times 10 to the 12. Nope, you're wrong. Usually I have people, I can tell because they start to race. As soon as I turn around and write 4.5, they're racing. You get people that don't know how to do these problems because when you get to this point, they don't know which way to go because they pattern. Their teachers have told them that if you have a large number, you go to the right. If you have a little number, you go to the left. But when they get to this, they don't know which way to go. And what did you just do? Well, you just did this. I gave this problem to a student one time, and this is what she did.
And she proceeded to do that. She got about half down the page, and I took the page away from her, threw it in the trash can. She started doing this. She had no idea that she could take 1.5 or 15. And what you did is you multiplied in these three steps. You multiplied 300 million times 150,000 million. Now people say, oh, I don't like science implementation. Well, you won't be a dumbass to ask your wife. Don't worry. Because you can take big numbers and you can multiply them in your head. Even with 365, look at this. 3,600 times 365. That's how many minutes are in a, a year. You do this with you do it with uh, physics and you do it with a lot with chemistry or physics. 3.6 times 10 to the third power times 3.65 times 10 to the second power. And you know that's going to be 10 to the fifth power. And then 3.6 and you're going to get around 16, I mean, yeah, 16, a little bit less than 16, which would be what, 15? Around 15 which would be 15 times 10 to the 5th, so that would be 1.5 times 10 to the what? 6th, which is 1.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's 1 million, 500,000 minutes in a year. Now, Somebody multiply on the calculator 3.6 times 3.65 and you get it. Well, I'm off that much. I just did it in my head. 3.6 times 3.65. 3. 3.6 times 3.65. 30. Okay, 13.5, 14. So it's 1,400,000. 1, 1, because I just, I just rounded it to 15. But my whole point, we don't have to write this thing. The whole point me showing you this, I've had people learn scientific annotations, learn what I just showed you, and they go back and they do this. Now, I'm sorry, that's, that's missing. That's missing not only the train, but the boat and the bus. Why would you go and do this? And you can do this in two different steps. All right, let's do a nerd. Yeah, it's a, it should be 14. <laughs> I'm, I, I estimated it up instead of down. All right, here we go. Let's go with 55 <laughs> times 10 to the 8 divided by. 5 times 10 to the 6. So what's 55 divided by 5? 11 times 10 to the second 
And I gotta move the dust in one place. Which way did I move this dust when my head to get back the way it was? Right? So 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the third, which is 110, isn't it? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 1100. So in my head, I just multiply it. 5, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I just divided 500 million, I think. Yeah. I just divided 500 million by 5 million. Yeah, right here. Which way did I move this in my head to get it back the way it was? Right here. Right. So if you take this out, 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 you're left with 500. Okay, I must have got something wrong. Oh, it's supposed to be 55. Sorry. 55. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I need to take off that one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And how many is. I've got something wrong for me. I'm supposed to have 5,500. What's 1.1? 1 .1? Let me do this again. 1.1. 1, 1, 2, 3. It's supposed to be 1,100. Somebody do that on your calculator and see if you get 1,100. I've got an error somewhere. Oh, I didn't do my zeros right. 5.5, Okay, I think I got too many zeros. I think I did wrong over there. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, See. Yeah, that would be right. It's got, it should be 1100. Okay. You didn't think you could do stuff like that in your head, did you? How do you think people do things like that in their head? They don't sit there and go, oh, yeah, 225,000 times 426. They change it into scientific notation in their head and do the simple math in their head and use the exponents. That's how they do it. Very important that you learn how to do this. Now, what should you do in your homework? The last two problems that I did, you need to know how to do those. And any word problems that I do on scientific notation, because I fill your test up with word problems with scientific notations out of 5.6. So my advice to you, not only do the homework for 5.6, but you better do the study plan for 5.6 also, because I will pull 80% of your tests from 5.6. Why? Because most of you are going to be taking biology and chemistry, and what's in there? Scientific notation. Okay. Let me get the roll. And then I don't know what time it is. You'll tell me what time it is. What time's class over? It's a miracle. I got it right.